I'm gonna top this off a little bit. You always have great ideas. I do. I'm the factory of good ideas. I've been told by nobody. Okay. <laughs> I just, I, I, I love this, man. I love how these, like these Trappist quads, that thick head that they always have. It's just so beautiful. Like visually, these, these beers are always just so appealing. So I think we need to go deep on something for all of our audience here. What exactly is a Trappist beer and what exactly qualifies a beer as being able to be labeled as a Trappist beer? This is a really, really cool concept to dig deep into. You want to get started on it? I, I would love to, my friend. So, um, well, wait, let me take another <laughs> Yeah, I well, got to. Got to. Yeah, just, just. Mm. Mm. Yes. So delicious. So, Trappist beer. Um, if you have a bottle of Chimay or another Trappist beer, you'll notice that somewhere on the label, and we'll put it on the screen, there's this little symbol. And the symbol says, authentic Trappist product. Now, in order to be classified as a Trappist beer or product in general, it needs to follow specific rules. Uh, so it needs to be made on an abbey, a, a Trappist abbey. It needs to be supervised by monks or nuns that are Trappist like. So they have to be involved in the process of, of the production uh, of the beer in this case. And uh, all the uh, income that is being made like from the selling yeah. of the products has to go into back into the uh, the abbey and uh, and their uh, and the community their activities. Right? Do, do you know like what like to what extent they need to be involved in the brewing of the beer? This is always something I was really curious about. Are they just sort of like walking around and supervising and making sure everything's going okay and taking a sip every once in a while? Are they the only ones involved in the brewing process? Are there other brewers there as well that are kind of being whipped by the monks to them to work faster? Like what's, what is this dynamic like? I'm so curious. Well, uh, it's, if you look and try and, and you know, research a little bit on the, on the Trappist uh, website, uh, they do have a website, we'll, we'll put it up here so you guys can also go and check it out. It, it's, it's a little broad uh, the way, it just says like they, they have to be involved yeah. in supervision. I know, right? so, Are they just drinking the beer? Is that being involved? Well, it's it's that's quality control. It is exactly, so, yeah. So, but uh, it's uh, you mentioned that like I, I I was reading here before we started the review uh, what they write here on the label, and it's interesting because they say here on the Chimay specifically, is the exceptional yeast isolated by Father Theodore. Wow. So, so apparently Father Theodore uh, selected the yeast strains <laughs> that is then used in the beer. So to answer your question. Um, they can uh, be involved. It's not that they, there's a rule like against them being involved. I think it's more like uh, you know a guideline. So it means like that the abbey has to be involved in the process in some capacity. So obviously, if none of the Trappist uh, you know uh, fathers are, are are beer experts, like it's probably a good idea that they hire someone that can help them in doing that. But if they do have an interest and want to be involved, and, and you know, and maybe some abbeys do have that interest. Uh, then you know it's it's most more like a pride, so that they can actually produce the beer and uh, actually like you know represent something that like is incredibly unique. Another detail that they say here on the label again is that uh, they're using uh, the highly protected water of the abbey's well. Wow! So, so water, we've talked about it before. It's an important element. It, it's 90% of what the beer is made with. So obviously having a specific source of water like makes uh, the flavors in that beer incredibly unique. So again, like all of those elements go into the fact of protecting a very specific style of beer that has been made like for a very long time. And and the, you know, the monks are there to protect it. <laughs> they are there. So th that's really, really important to mention. So as a Kind of a summary here, it means that the beer needs to be supervised by the Trappist monks. It also needs to be brewed on the grounds of the abbey or the monastery, let's say. And there are breweries, like we talk about St. Bernardus a lot. St. Bernardus lost their certification as a Trappist beer because they moved the production off the grounds of an abbey and into a bigger production center, saying that, you know what, we need to, we're going to sacrifice sort of having this official Trappist uh, certification in order for to being able to mass produce on a bit of a higher level. Which is really interesting. And I like how you mentioned that all the funds 
uh, all the proceeds from the sales as well go back either into the Abbey or in the community. And this has been something traditionally that the monks have always been doing as a way to sort of support the community that supports them in the monastery as well. And a lot of them started off by doing something else as well. Normally, um, cheese is a very, very common product that these monasteries would produce, specifically Chimay. Still, to this day, produces the Chimay cheese, which I wish we had that we could pair along with this. We don't, unfortunately. But man, I wish we did. So <laughs> next time, my friend. Next, next time. Next time. So guys, if you're ever wondering what is a Trappist beer, what makes a Trappist beer Trappist, there's actually only 14, last I read, certified Trappist breweries in the world currently. Um, most of them are in Belgium, I believe there's one in Spain, one in the United States, and then scattered around one, in, one or two in France as well. But to think that there's only 14, so that if you do see a beer that says on it, Trappist Ale, certified Trappist Ale, you know it's coming from one of those 14, and you know that those wizards, those monks have got their hands all over it. Whether they're actually working to brew the beer, whether they're just tasting it, whether they're whipping their employees and kicking them in the butt and getting them to work faster and yelling at them, and you know, you never know. You never know what's actually going on in those abbeys, but they're involved in some way, in some way. God bless those monks for choosing those yeasts, for choosing that well water, and for providing us with this delicious beer.